DJI just released this case for the Action 2. As well as protecting the camera from damage, they say it will solve the overheating issue, or at least improve the situation. And there's quite a bit of confusion over how this actually works, so I did some tests to get to the bottom of it. The case has a small magnet which triggers a sensor which tells the camera that it's installed. And as a few of us have figured out by now, placing a magnet in just the right place tricks the camera into thinking the case is on. If you listen carefully, you can actually hear the switch being triggered. So I decided to test the run times and measure the temperatures with and without this magnetic switch being triggered, as well as testing it with the case installed. And after the tests, I'll tell you why I think DJI have done something quite silly with this case and why I think they should design a new version. But first, the tests. Room temperature was 22 degrees Celsius and I completely cooled the camera to room temperature between each test. At 4K120 without the magnet, it got 6 minutes and 4 seconds. And according to my thermal camera, the exterior temperature reached 53 degrees C. With the magnet in place, it ran for 8 minutes and 13 seconds. That's an increase of 35.4%. And this time the exterior temperature reached 62 degrees C. So it ran 9 degrees hotter. Next, I wanted to see how long it would record at my most used setting, 4K60. Without the magnet, it got 8 minutes and 18 seconds. And with the magnet, it got 15 minutes and 17 seconds. That's an increase of 84.1%. So then it was time to see what difference adding the power module makes, which itself acts as a heatsink. Because it can now record onto the memory card, less heat is generated in the camera module. At 4K60 without the magnet, it got 22 minutes and 44 seconds. And with the magnet, it got over 36 minutes. And keep in mind that for all these tests, the camera was on a desk indoors with no airflow. Take it outside and these run times should get even longer. It's still winter where I am, which is why I haven't done the tests outdoors. So let's now do the same thing with the case installed and see if it helps dissipate some of that heat and extend the run times even further. And not all of these tests went the way I expected. First, just the camera module with the case. At 4K 120, it recorded for 9 minutes and 22 seconds, and the surface temperature reached 56 degrees. Now for 4K 60. This time we got 16 minutes and 47 seconds. That's more than double what it runs for without the case, and that's fantastic. And now with the power module attached and in the case. And this was the most interesting result of the whole experiment. Because if you remember, without the case but with the magnet we got over 36 minutes. But with the case, we only got 26 minutes and 30 seconds, which is about 10 minutes less. That's a massive loss in recording time. In this instance, the case is actually making it worse compared to just the magnet. I ran the test again with just the top case installed and got 25 minutes and 49 seconds. Nowhere near the 36 minutes the camera gets with just the magnet. So what have I learned from spending another two days of my life doing these tests? Well, there are two things at play here that are extending the recording times. First of all, the magnet tells the camera to increase the maximum temperature it's allowed to reach before it stops recording. The camera gets hotter, but the case protects the fingers. The firmware change alone is responsible for the majority of the extra runtime by cranking up that temperature cutoff threshold. On top of that, the case on the camera module itself acts as a fairly weak but still functional heatsink and adds about an extra minute of runtime. And so in the end, put those two things together and we're getting double the recording time, but only when using the camera module on its own. If we use the case when the two modules are connected, we do get a bit longer than without the case because the firmware is running the camera to a higher temperature, but we're talking about an extra 4 minutes, whereas with just the magnet we get an extra 18 minutes. With the modules attached, the case is actually holding the camera back, reducing the runtime by a large degree compared to using just the magnet. And I think it's because now we have this insulating material separating the camera module from this nice big heatsink. I still think DJI has done something great here. The camera had quite an unfortunate launch because of the overheating issues. Again, they released an unfinished camera that left a lot of people frustrated and disappointed. 
but now, four or five months later, they've actually solved it. The run times have been extended, fingers are more comfortable, and when using the camera module on its own, the run times have now doubled, which is really impressive. It's a pity we have to make the camera bigger and less beautiful to get those longer run times, but that's just the way it's gonna have to be. But here's where I think they've made a strange and unfortunate decision with this case. DJI say the case is designed to fit both the dual screen combo and the power combo. The thing is, it doesn't really. The dual display module is thicker than the power module and it juts out the back of the camera, whereas the power module sits nice and flush. And so this new case fits the screen module just fine, but when you put the power module in there, there's this massive gap. Not only does that make it unnecessarily bulky and ugly, but it doesn't protect this big piece of easily scratched aluminium and it slides around and rattles inside. It just feels and looks wrong. They really should have made two versions of the lower part of the case, and I can't believe they thought this one-size-fits-all approach was a good idea. So for now, I'm using mine like this. It went from the most beautiful action camera ever designed to kind of funny looking, but now at least it works so much better than before. DJI, if you're watching this, I appreciate what you've done so far with this, but I think you need to go back to the drawing board just one more time and make a case that fits the PAR module. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time.